What's up YouTube? This is John back with another episode of Engineering Awesome and today I'm going to do a video that I've been really really excited to do. This is my custom built DIY laser engraver. I designed this 100% myself. Uh, I had a whole bunch of design constraints with it but uh, honestly I think it really turned out excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little bit more about this and at the end of this video I will be releasing the models if you guys are interested in making this yourself. Let's take a closer look at it. This is my custom built DIY laser engraver. Now this is not a cutter. The laser unit itself, the laser module, is only two and a half watts. But I found that it's actually very sufficient. I'm able to cut some uh, balsa wood, I'm able to engrave poplar really easily, and I even engraved a steel M1A magazine. I was able to get through the finish. Uh, it doesn't touch the bare metal, but it went through the finish and engraved that. It, it's okay, but uh, you'd have to basically make it really wide if you wanted to be able to see it. I also engraved a uh, PMAG with it and all of that turned out pretty good. I've been very impressed with this unit. Now, I mentioned right off the bat I had a whole bunch of design constraints. So what did I mean by that? I actually took an old uh, Monoprice Maker Select 3D printer that I had that was uh, really not that great, especially if you take that printer and compare it to the Perusa MK3. Uh, there's no comparison at all. Uh, with the mesh bed leveling, I barely ever have any faults with the Perusa, so that is the only printer that I ever use, and my Maker Select just kept breaking down on me. Uh, finally, I had one of the Z-axis lead screws give out, and I just kind of said, ah, it's not worth messing with. Sat around forever. So I took all of the linear motion components that I needed off of that and turned it into a Core XY laser engraver. Uh, I designed this 100% myself. I had the extrusion laying around, so that was another design constraint. I do have the wind bandsaw. If you guys saw that video, I'll go ahead and put a card up here if you're interested in seeing that. So I could have cut this down to size, but the bigger the better when it comes to basically anything CNC. So I pushed this to basically as big as I could possibly get it. Right now it'll do uh, 190 millimeters in the Y direction and the X direction it'll do 290 millimeters. Now I could crank a little bit more out based on the placement of the limit switches, uh, this one as well, but I didn't really see a huge point in it. Uh, these motors I pulled right off of that. The laser engraver runs about 120 bucks on Amazon, so not much there. Uh, this right here, the just the G2 belts, pretty cheap. Um, really, I have about 160 in this, minus what uh, the printer costs and then what the extrusion costs. So, if you guys are interested in it, I am, like I said, going to post the links now. Most of the stuff, you if you don't have one of those that you want to take apart, one of those 3D printers, you can still make this. Uh, the thing that is probably going to be a challenge is the cable carrier here. You can also get this off of Amazon, but you may have to modify the models very slightly to make it fit. I will do my best to make it uh, work for you. I'm going to find some of this chain, the energy chain. Well, that's the IGUS uh, model of it. Just this uh, cable carrier, I'll find some of that on Amazon. I will link that down below so that you guys can go to it. I can't promise that will fit in the model, but uh, I, I don't care to help a little bit as time allows uh, to go ahead and help you put that in there. Now, a couple of the things that I did with this that if I could go back, I would probably do differently. Um, the corner mounts here for the pulleys, I made these pretty tall where I really didn't need to. My thinking on that when I was doing it, make the bolts identical here and here, uh, make them identical on, on these pulleys as well, all the same length, fewer parts, but I think I could have gotten away with some M25s which I used in another location. So, so M6 by 25, sorry, not M25, that'd be huge. 
So I could have used 25 millimeter length instead of 35 millimeter length, but you know, there's a couple of little things like that. It ends up not being a huge deal. This was very sturdy. I was really surprised at that. Another thing I would have changed is there's counterboard holes. You might be able to see it down in here. Um, I made those fit for uh, M6s by 16 millimeter because that's what I used here, here, uh, you know, everywhere that you see these corner brackets and uh, the rod supports. I used 16 millimeter long M6s. I made that the same. I should just made it uh, M6 by 25 or 35, but you know, live and learn. I did it pretty quick, about three modeling sessions to get this done. So all in all, it turned out pretty decent. The black material that you can see versus the red material is basically a version two. I had to make a couple modifications. Uh, when I first did the uh, carriage that rides on the x-axis, I just had that supported basically with a U on there. And then I zip tied the uh, rods on there and that allowed it to shift down as you tighten this. It put too much of a load here on, on these pulleys and it was able to kind of crank that in. Uh, it made me pretty nervous. It didn't end up affecting performance really at all, but I went ahead and changed this so it fully captures it. Now, if you have any kind of misalignment, such as one rod uh, a little bit further in than the other and allowing that to kind of move in a little bit, and I do apologize for the wind noise. I, I've moved out to my garage. Today we're getting ready to have a storm. But uh, if you do have it cocked at all, you will have a little bit of trouble uh, moving this back and forth as you get closer to the edges. I don't have this bolted down as you can see. But, you know, it, it still is fine. I haven't had a single issue with it, honestly. Been very impressed with how this turned out. Now, if you'll give me just one second, I'll go ahead and grab a couple of examples of what I have cut with this. This is the first thing. Uh, well, not the very first thing, but it's the first thing that I want to show you guys. Uh, this was me kind of experimenting with a raster image and trying to engrave a complete picture. It took forever. It really didn't end up being worth it. It burned the edges a whole lot. I shouldn't have run it at full power, but uh, I did, and lesson learned. I don't really like how this turned out. I may try again in the future with uh, maybe it's set to uh, S220 or something, but I don't know. This is it actually cutting, and this is quarter inch, if I'm not mistaken, quarter inch material. Uh, it, it cut. It took a long time, probably 30, maybe even 40 passes. I, I don't know. I set the software up to do 50. It looked like it had cut all the way through, so I went ahead and pulled it. Uh, it hadn't gotten the corners real great, but it worked. So that is something. And it, it didn't take too long because this will move pretty quick. Another couple of things that I've been working on are these little signs. So I made one for my dad, and I went ahead and posted on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page. And a couple of buddies at work saw it, and they're like, hey, you know, I'd like to get one of those for my desk and I was like well if, if a couple of my friends from work that are my age might be interested in that then there might be a bunch of people that are interested so I started making these little name tags uh, just kind of for fun I had some material laying around anyway that was popular so this was just an initial experiment as you can see the subdued flag turned out excellent I had a couple of issues down here and you can't really see it probably too great from the video, but some of these plumes here are really very strange. Um, one of them crosses over into another plume. This one's got, in the middle there, has got kind of a, a tall spot in it. Down here, they really look weird. One of them's even straight. It's, it doesn't even look like a triangle. And I was like, man, I must have a belt slipping or something. So I... I jacked around with this and, and played with it and I could not get it to improve. So I was like, ah, maybe it's not that. Maybe I'm having issues with the software. That ended up being it. I'm using Inkscape with a couple of laser plugins and it seems like it does really well with certain images depending on how well it, it turns it into a bitmap. And then certain fonts seem to really do 
a lot better than others. And this font looks awesome as a laser engraved font. So I'm making these signs and I've got them on my Etsy shop if you guys are interested. That link is down below in the description uh, to my Etsy shop. And then I've, I've got three signs posted right now. I've got this one, which is by far my favorite. Uh, I've got one of these myself. I made it for my reloading room. And then I've got this. You guys can make your own. And then I've got this one because I did a, a little photography sign for somebody that does some some artwork at a, a local gallery, one of my dad's friends, uh, and one of mine. I, I like to go shooting shotgun with him. Now, with this, safety is kind of a big deal. You need to buy safety rated glasses. I cannot stress this enough. You have to have the glasses. Uh, I will link some down below. Use whatever safety or laser safety rated glasses you you have you want to buy the cheapest ones you want it, it doesn't matter to me I will link some down below but you must have those this laser and this is a disclaimer this laser is not built with safety in mind it's fully open top there are no safeties on this unit I plan to build an enclosure at some point but as the models will be released today there is no safety. Safety is your responsibility with this unit as with all things. Shooting this, CNC's, using a table saw, it does not matter. Safety is your responsibility. Make sure that you do everything that you can to protect yourself. And in this situation, keep your fingers away from the laser and make sure you use the glasses. This is two and a half watts. It will hurt you. Now, one of the big questions that a lot of you guys are gonna have what kind of software did I use? I'm just using Marlin. It's just a 3D printer software. I have this ramps board laying around. I've printed this case up on the Perusa, but I've got uh, one of these ramps boards laying around. I've actually got a second one in the house just laying around. And then this is the power supply from my Perusa. I'm gonna be swapping that out with just a simple, uh, probably a 60 watt or something like that power supply uh, for a computer and just plug it in here so that I can get rid of this big box and, and just be done with that. I'll also plug in a, a uh, LCD at some point, but I modified the Marlin software so that it would work with this. I think I'll probably post it. Um, I might, I'm going to work on making some software modifications so the screens look right and don't look like uh, the typical 3D printer. I do plan someday to use the thermocouple and check temperature here but for now that's not really something I'm gonna mess with now future upgrades for this let's talk about that because as the models release now it's not perfect so what are the upgrades that I'm planning on doing in the future I've got a couple of washers down here that are spacers I'm gonna 3d print a block uh, it wasn't possible to print a spacer on this just based on the geometry of it so I didn't worry about it too much I wanted it cutting as fast as possible. Uh, another thing I'm going to do, and you guys probably can't see it, but I have a small hole here in the carriage. I actually am experimenting with some gears and my plan is to make it so all you really need is like a T-handle and you put it on an M6 bolt here because M6 is the common theme here and you basically just turn that T-handle to focus this. Uh, you do have to focus it for each material and right now you got to reach underneath and twist this and turn it and uh, it's it's kind of a pain. After that, I plan on doing some wire management. This is a this is a mess and there's hardly anything on here. Uh, you've got a limit switch here on the X and you've got a limit switch here on the Y. You've got the laser and you've got the two motor cables. That's it. There's nothing else to this. If I add a thermocouple, it will only add one wire. So I plan on doing something with this. I did design T-nuts for this where all you do is you push in an M6 nut that you get down at the hardware store and then you don't have to spend a dollar a T-nut if you get it from 8020. Um, makes it way, way cheaper. Uh, this whole thing was designed just to be cheap. So um, those are the, the big modifications that I plan or I guess really the small modifications I plan that I think will have a big impact on this unit. Uh, after that, there will be a method of attaching this to a tabletop, which is just gonna be probably some right angle brackets. You might even be able to use something like that. 
uh, or I'm sorry, like this so that you guys can see it, uh, to attach it to a piece of wood. But ultimately my goal is to make a full enclosure with a open top and I want to have some kind of uh, pass through system so all I have to do is, is push in a plate, I can do some cutting on it, but a lot of the development on this is probably going to stall a little bit. I thought that these signs would uh, be a little bit more popular because this is the kind of stuff that I use to actually support this kind of thing. So I, I'm probably not going to do a ton with it until I get a little bit further on the, the projects for my CNC uh, and that kind of thing. Now if I start selling the crap out of these, then yeah, I'm going to definitely probably start doing some more with this but I'm gonna design some fixture plates for it when I do the pass-through system so all I have to do is load some some quick jigs in there uh, and then I can have two of them on hand pull one out set it off to the side put six blocks whatever in there and just throw it in and go uh, that's probably the thing I'm most excited about because I love fixturing uh, that's something I used to do a lot and it's something I, I get really passionate about as silly as as work holding might sound to some of you so this is my laser. Just to recap real quick, I will be releasing the models. You can check Thingiverse. Uh, I will be posting affiliate links, uh, not only on Thingiverse, but also in the link in the description down below if you're interested in the laser. Uh, I'll have a ramps board there that I've found to work pretty well that's cheap, comes with everything you need. I'll put some of this energy chain. I keep calling it that. It's cable carrier. And uh, I'll probably post a couple of other little things. This will be at the top. Cheapest one. Now, I know you guys hate hearing it, but the affiliate links help me. If I can uh, use that to generate a little bit of income, then I am able to do more with this. In the, in the future, I plan to work on a plasma. So I'm thinking a four foot by four foot plasma cutter. I'm thinking I might even do a 60 watt CO2 laser. This thing has been a blast. So if I can generate some income on my Etsy shop uh, doing this stuff, or if I can use this uh, just to have some fun, do a project, put it out there, and then you guys use some of the affiliate links as you purchase stuff for it to generate a little bit of income. I can keep doing this stuff. I can keep developing this particular one. I can develop new machines. Uh, just have some fun you know what I mean so I definitely appreciate it if you use the affiliate links to use those just click it go to Amazon if you say buy this laser just make sure you've clicked the affiliate link before and I get credit for it doesn't increase your cost at all now if you want to further support the channel and say you need to go buy a, a new computer I, I bought a computer not real long ago then you can actually click on one of my affiliate links such as this laser go to Amazon from that page say the laser page go to the computer you want put it in your cart and check out then uh, I also get credit for that so anything you guys can do to, to help out there will allow me to continue to develop these machines uh, if you guys have any questions at all on this system uh, anything I didn't cover on it please feel free to ask in the comments down below if you guys enjoyed this video, think you might like to build this, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button so that I can do some more content like this. Um, and know that you guys are interested in it because I can do follow up videos on this laser, um, you know, anything really, you know. And uh, I definitely, again, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time on Engineering Awesome.